Everything is bigger in the U.S. You got bigger homes. You got a bigger army. And now I'm checking out some of the biggest roads I have ever seen in my life. Or interstates, as you call them. So that is today's video, ladies and gentlemen, inside that camera. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. If you're new here, my name is Adam. Click a like, click a sub. And let's do this. Alice high five. One of the I think I've seen this one in another photograph, but it wasn't as clear as this. Hi! I'm gonna try and count the amount of roads on this screen right now, and I'm gonna get it wrong. Also, can we, can we take a look at how small cars are? Take a look at how small them cars are, man. That kind of gives an indication as to how big this fucking road is. I'm gonna count how many lanes I see, right? 1, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'd say there's probably about 40. I'd say there's probably about 40 lanes on this right now. That one road. One, two, three. Has it? Okay. Tallest highway interchanges in the world. It gets its name from the fact that there are five different levels of roadways crossing each other in this one spot. And so five? Where? Is why do I feel like there's probably underground here as well, man? One, two, three, four. Oh, I said there's probably underground, you know? In some ways, it's kind of atrocious, right? It's this enormous area of land dedicated to a complex spaghetti of concrete and steel, like the worst symbol of our car-obsessed culture. But in another way, it really is an impressive it's feat of engineering. It really is. 37 bridges and more than 700 columns are crammed into this one spot to keep the roughly half a million vehicles flowing in every direction each day. They say everything's bigger in Texas, but that's not always true when it comes to engineering projects in the U.S. The tallest concrete dam is split between Arizona and Nevada. The longest bridge span is in New York. The longest road tunnel is in Alaska, and the longest water tunnel, not only in the U.S., but the whole world, is the Delaware Aqueduct in... A water tunnel? What's that for? Don't answer that. New York. The largest hydroelectric plant is the Grand Coulee Dam in Washington, Holly! while the largest nuclear plant is in Georgia. Simpsons! But one thing that Texas really does do bigger is highway interchanges. That is crazy. If you've crazy. driven from one major Texas highway onto or over another, you may have been astonished to find yourself and your vehicle well over 100 feet or 30 meters above the ground. There's no clearinghouse of data for flyover ramp heights, as far as I could find, Plus, there's the complexity of what a true height really means, since many interchanges use excavation below grade for the lower level. <laughs> Still, even the most conservative estimate puts the High Five taller than the Statue of Liberty from her feet to the top of her head. And if you do a little digging, you'll find what? that many, if not most, of the tallest highway interchanges in the world are right here in the Lone Star State. Let's talk about why. I'm Grady, and this is practical. What does Lone Star State mean? What's that? Good God! How the idea of a freeway oh, really yes. started in the night. Is this gonna start? Is this gonna tell me a little bit about it? How it got built? If it is, I'm excited. Hey, can we bring these type of cars back, man? Please. I know that's not real, very practical for when it rains, but I'm sure there's some sort of hood that we could stick on the top. I know you could say, "I'm just going buy a convertible." No, I won't. I want this exact type of car to come back with the skinny wheels. You know, the easy access door, you just kind of pop out. Hardly any windshield. Probably not even a radio. Get, bring them back. Rolled access. Freeways are separated from local roads with limited ways to get on and off. That just reminds me of Grand Theft vehicle Auto. In the past century, the idea of a controlled access freeway is... Or why is this guy driving with his hazard lights on? Pretty much taken for granted. Smooth curves and limited chances to that. enter or exit mean more speed and more <laughs> capacity. But eventually, those big roads intersect other roads, sometimes other big roads. That's and overwhelming. That an obvious challenge. Unlike most roads that cross at the same level on the ground, or as engineers say, at grade, freeways use grade separation at intersections. Roads mm -hmm. go over or under one another. No traffic signals stopping or... Uh, I'm assuming, like, let's take, this for, let's take this shot for an example, right? These cars going around here eventually meet this one that's coming down. Where is this one coming from? Because this one looks like it might have joined this one at some point. Because these are single... These are single files. These are single file lanes. So is it just for a bit of separation? For a bit of like lead wear? What? Or like what is the point in this? Or is this coming off like a, you know, like a little rural road somewhere out of a town or something like that? For one another. 
No traffic signals, stopping, or interruptions. Again, this is nothing groundbreaking. But what if you want to turn from one road onto another? Just like that, we've gone from an intersection to an interchange, and this is where things okay. get a lot more complicated. But we have to build up to it. The diamond interchange is probably the simplest way to get grade separation because it kind of half doesn't. Through traffic on the freeway flows right by, in most cases without any need to slow down. Okay. But that's not true at the crossroad. Ramps enter and exit the highway at gentle angles and meet the crossroad nearly at right angles. Viewed from above, the ramps form a rough diamond shape, giving the interchange its name. The intersections of the ramps and the crossroad are just that, intersections. They're usually controlled by stop signs or traffic signals. Diamond Normal. interchanges can often get away with having just... Can I just say that I know you guys see us kind of reacting to this sort of stuff and be like, oh, why? This is just the norm. It's because this is not the norm for us. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? See, nine times out of ten where I'm from, I think there might be one lane that has more than what I'm about to say. One. Our, like, normal roads like this are probably, like, double. Like, double lanes. There's two lanes, and that's it. That would probably be the max. There's probably, I think there's maybe one, like, road like this and maybe has, like, five lanes on it. But, yeah. Uh -uh. Just one bridge, a relatively small one, carrying the crossroad over the highway. So this can be the cheapest and easiest type of interchange to build. But Jesus. those intersections create limitations on how much traffic it can handle. So it's really only used when the crossroad is a minor one. Mm -hmm. This kind of interchange is sometimes called a service interchange in contrast to a system interchange where two... What is going on? How many lanes do you want us to build, sir? Yes. What the fuck? I don't even know what's going on. That is mad looking. Two controlled access highways cross. As traffic increases, the only way to increase capacity is to eliminate at grade intersections. So the largest interchanges, separation for <laughs> every lane. The classic system interchange is the clover leaf. Four ramps form a diamond, usually for the right hand turns. These are directional ramps. That is, they curve toward the ultimate direction the traveler's yeah. trying to go. Okay. You exit right and end up driving to the right. The other four ramps give the clover leaf its name. The loop ramps, usually used for left-hand turns, curve around while ascending or descending so they can cross over themselves. So you can get traffic whoa, flowing whoa, 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 in where, any where, direction. Where, where am I going? How do I get on this? Am I coming down this? Because why is he going up? How do I get on that then? Hold on a minute. How do I get on that? I, I'm driving down here. Boom, ba boom, ba boom. I just, do I zoom in here underneath and go up? The loop ramps, usually used for left-hand turns, curve around while ascending or descending so they can cross over themselves. I'm confused. So you can get traffic flowing in any direction with no at-grade intersections and just one bridge. The loop ramps make the whole thing that look is. like a four-leaf cloak. Okay. But finding yourself on this type of interchange bad. doesn't usually feel very lucky. For one, the loops are often pretty tight, requiring motorists to slow way down. Mm -hmm. And for two, there's the weave. Consider Jesus. traffic entering the highway from one of the loops. In the same place, vehicles are trying to get back there we up go. to speed and merge left onto the free. Look at this. Anyway, driver. Hey! Fucking hell! Drivers trying to exit the highway are slowing down oh, and that's... moving right. Bro, that's... This inevitably creates traffic as people struggle yeah, to merge and panic. cross paths with one another. Along with suboptimal traffic conditions, cloverleaf interchanges eat up a lot of land. When cloverleafs were at the height of popularity <laughs> in the mid 20th century, Land was plentiful, and there were fewer cars, but as the volume of traffic increased and the cost of land went up, engineers had to come up with new solutions to build better grade-separated highway crossings, mm -hmm. and so they did. Now, there's such a huge variety of freeway interchange designs that it would be impossible to cover them all. The turbine, the windmill, the braided interchange... <laughs> <laughs> nah, wait a minute. Turbine, the windmill interchange, the ITL, mixes of various designs and more. Each of these balances the constraints of a project like this in different ways. Land requirements, cost, capacity, safety, etc. And the design that generally provides the most capacity on the smallest footprint, often for the highest cost, is the stack. Like the cloverleaf, a stack has four directional ramps, usually for the right-hand turns. But mm -hmm. we move the exit like this the left-hand turn off the main highway to avoid the weaving problem oh, hold on, and man. fly them over the middle of the intersection where, am I flying? where they meet up with the opposite directional ramp. These ramps are often called okay. flyovers, yeah, it. and it's easy to see why. 
the gentle curves okay. and elevation changes. Sorry, of the stack. I'm literally trying to like visualize this all in my head and try and figure it out if I was driving on an actual road. <laughs> mean that drivers can safely maintain speed whether they're going straight through the interchange or changing direction. The curved ramps often bank to the inside of the curve called super elevation, making it even easier to maintain speed through the turn. This conventional configuration is called a four level stack. There's one level for the freeway, another for the crossing freeway to pass over, and two levels for the flyovers. It's bridges <coughs> on bridges, each one providing enough clearance underneath for large trucks. So these upper ramps end up pretty high off the ground. Four level stacks are actually fairly ubiquitous in the US these days. These are impressive structures mm -hmm. in their own right, but this is where Texas takes it to another level, literally, and it mostly has to do with feeder or frontage roads. Lots of highways use frontage roads running parallel to connect areas this alongside so that would to me, otherwise you know. be cut off from the roadway. I network. love this. They allow businesses to develop right up to and facing the freeway with okay. easy access to those coming on. How and do you off, get all? How do you get down there? Keeping areas attached to the roadway network. Texas took the idea and ran with Good it. Good idea. Apparently, they started as a way to reduce the cost of acquiring land for road projects. If you could promise the landowner access to a new highway along a frontage road, you're making their property more valuable. I think the, the other thing that's kind of like a shock factor to me is just the size of it all. Like, again, I always go back to like where I live. And I, like I said earlier on, we do have a lane that's like five lanes at one point in one point. But it's not for very long. It's not the road itself isn't very long, right? It's just got that girth. Very short. They're willing to sell a portion for the highway at a much lower cost. Okay. Now Texas has over six thousand four hundred miles or ten thousand three hundred kilometers of frontage roads. That's almost the circumference of the moon, and what? as far as I can tell, way more than any other state in the US. I won't go into the pros and cons of this approach here. Some research has shown pretty conclusively that the money saved on acquisition costs doesn't really make up for their many disadvantages. The moon? And Texas has since changed its policy to only include frontage roads on new freeways <clears throat> where necessary and justified. Although from what I can tell from seeing new construction these days, there don't seem to be many projects where they've been left out. Jesus. And one major effect of putting frontage roads alongside every highway happens at interchanges, because these are more roads that need grade separation from all the others. So at stack interchanges around the state, there aren't just four levels, but five. In fact, this kind of interchange is often referred to as the Texas stack because it's so popular the here. The Texas in a typical stack configuration, one freeway goes below grade at the bottom level. The frontage roads sit at grade. The crossing freeway is elevated. Okay, so below are... grade is technically below ground, 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 ground level, right? Because he said at the start, engineers refer to ground level as grade, so he just said under grade. So I, I was right earlier when I said it was underground. Genius! Two layers of flyovers with a minimum vertical clearance of 16 feet or about five meters, plus the thickness of each bridge, vehicles on the highest flyovers are often more than 100 feet or 30 meters above the ground. It's a nice way to get a good Jesus. look at the city, even if you only get to enjoy the view for a moment. The Dallas High Five is probably the most famous interchange in Texas with its cool nickname, but it doesn't stand alone. I can only see there three. are quite a few five-level stacks around the state, and even a couple that qualify as six-level stacks with flyovers connecting to other highways. My friend Brian, better known as the Texas Highway Man, documents a lot of new <laughs> construction in Texas, including this replacement of an a old great nickname crossing out. with a five-level stack in San Antonio. These flyovers will be higher than a 12-story building when they're done. The frontage roads for this new interchange use a pretty innovative concept. When was this uploaded? Three weeks ago? Fuck. I was going to say if it was a couple years ago, it could have been made by now. We could have went and looked at it. Four partial roundabouts morph into one funny-shaped roundabout that's been lovingly nicknamed the Fidget Spinner. Of course, Texas stacks don't only exist in the Lone Star State. The Big Eye is another famous interchange in Albuquerque, decorated with a tumbleweed snowman each winter. The Judge Harry Pregerson interchange in Los Angeles gets its fifth level, not for frontage roads, but for the high occupancy lane. Plus, it has a railroad, which I always appreciate. What? Not just because I like trains, but also oh, because that's it's so a reminder cool. that these artfully sculpted ribbons of concrete carefully woven together represent a tremendous investment of public money, our money, into a way of getting people from A to B that has a lot of downsides. Yeah. Everyone has different thoughts about what a city should look like, but 
there's a growing recognition that the way we prioritize motor vehicle you traffic see, you in see the US, this this is yeah i don't we don't get this man we don't get this this is this is no may not have been the best path forward and so i admit that my ideal city has a lot fewer of these towering interchanges that kind of stand as a testament kind of so to cool, the transportation though. network that doesn't necessarily reflect our highest values and aspirations but I still find them pretty impressive in their own right, and whenever I'm in a new city, I try to plan my driving to hit those tallest ramps at the top of the stack to get a bigger, if momentary, perspective on the built environment. It's always a nice <coughs> reminder of our capacity for grand designs and ambitious projects, even if they might not always be the best solutions. Okay. Some of the most interesting interchanges I've ever seen were in oh. Beijing, China. I visited my what? now wife there when she was working as a teacher, and I love seeing how different all their infrastructure is. But planning that trip was an enormous challenge. China blocks a lot of US websites, including some of the services we use to stay in touch. We used VPNs to get around the censorship, oh, but back then here they were we go. slow and expensive. Uh, so when I first ah, tried out- nah, 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 nah. You got me in the first half, bro, but I gotta cut it there, because I'll get shouted out. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> That was awesome. I loved seeing that. Yo, that some of that engineering is is wild. That is wild impressive. I, I, I could I drive there? Probably. It just scared me a bit, but I'm sure I get used to it. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gents, if you have not yet, check out the pinned comment down below. There's a surprise in it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.